So today we are going to discuss handling of digital images and related file formats, very specifically concerned with the course projects, which is about using of digital fingerprints. We have discussed some issues in image processing earlier, but today we shall specifically look at the image representation in some standard file formats. I briefly mentioned the tools and utilities which are available and we will specifically discuss a file format called XPM file format or X pixel map as it was then called. We will then thoroughly discuss a sample program which I have written to demonstrate how grayscale images can be conveniently represented in a .xpm file, how such files can be created and finally how one can interface with the hardware device that we had demonstrated sometime earlier in the class for digital fingerprinting. As you know that device contains a lot of embedded software which captures the digital image, which captures two different types of templates, can compare templates and give a match score and so on. But essentially to the external world, what is provided is an application programmer's interface which can transfer the captured image to some computer's memory which you have allocated in your function or program. From then on, it is our job to get that image, store it in a file or analyze it for whatever purpose we want. Unfortunately, the application programmer interfaces which they gave were very rudimentary. What they had given was a sample application which we saw the other day, but the sample application was supplied only in binary form. So that means you cannot do anything with that particular application, just run it. So in order to access the image which is captured by that device, a whole lot of painful hacking had to be done by using some very low level interfaces which they had provided. I actually succeeded after days and nights of work yesterday morning at around 9 o'clock. Since then I have been capturing images because that module, in fact three of such units will be kept in the lab for your project work. So let us go on with the further discussion on general image representation problem and how we handle it in files. We will specifically also look at a few new features which we have not seen earlier. These are actually features of file processing and features of character manipulation as done in the classical C style, not C++ style. So here we go. This is something we have already seen. A digital image is a collection of pixel values. These are typically arranged in an array width by height. So whatever is the width multiplied by height is the total size of the image. Does it mean that we have so many bytes? Not necessarily. We have so many pixels. But each pixel can be represented in the simplest case just by one bit, which means it's a black or white image. In fact, most of the fingerprint images that you will get will have to be reduced to zero one images in order to do any meaningful processing. The one bit kind of representation is called a monocolor representation typically represented by M. So this is black and white. So black is 0, white is 1. You can have 8-bit grayscale, which means that the pixels are actually represented by a tone value varying between 0 to 255. These are the grayscales. Black is 0 and 255 is white. You can see that for representing our fingerprints, this is probably the best representation because each pixel or picture element can be represented by one byte value. A single byte, if it stores unsigned integer, then it can have a value between 0 to 255, which is all possible gray levels here. The real life images, which are color images, are stored in 24 bits per pixel. So actually each pixel is represented 
as a combination of red, blue and green value. In fact, if you see a picture point, this is a very enlarged picture point, it's actually a small dot on any television or computer monitor or for that matter on a printer photographic paper. Every point is actually a picture point and it has components of red, components of blue, I don't have blue, imagine this is blue for a moment and green. So as a matter of fact, on a computer monitor, every point physically on the hardware actually is lit by three different colors, red, blue and green. And each one can vary in intensity. That is how you get a variety of colors seen at every point. In fact, the point can actually represent a very large number of colors depending upon the combination of values for red, green and blue. As you can see, if I have to vary the level of any one color between 0 to 255, as I have varied between black and white, for example, I will have 0 to 255 values here, 0 to 255 values here, and 0 to 255 values here. The combination is 256 into 256 into 256 and that is what gives you almost 16 million possible colors that every point can have or can represent, can reflect. Usually no photograph will have all possible colors. I mean obviously if every point in a picture has to have a different color, then there has to be as many points in the picture, as many possible pixel values are there you generally have a much smaller picture. And therefore, these multiple millions of colors that you can have are not really required. As a matter of fact, in a typical photograph, you usually will never have more than 2,000 to 4,000 different colors for different points. In fact, many points in the picture will have very similar color. And as a matter of fact, in most representations, up to 256 different colors are more than adequate to represent the full color image by having different combinations of these. In fact, although each pixel can be represented by red, blue and green, a combination where exactly the same proportion of red, same proportion of green and same proportion of blue exists, that corresponds to actually black and white shares. A pure white, for example, is when red has 255 value, green has 255 value, and blue has 255. A pure black, for example, will have zero red, zero green, and zero blue. Consequently, if you can store the representation of a pixel intensity by three bytes, one byte representing a value of red between zero to 255, another byte representing a similar value for green and a third one representing for blue, you have all possible shades of color. More specifically, if you choose 256 combinations of these three red, blue, green colors, which actually have exactly the same value for red, blue and green, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, right up to 255, 255, 255, then what you get is a gray scale from black to white. So reverting back to the slides, as I said, one can have 16 million colors, but usually they are limited to 200 to 2000 colors. So what is done is a color palette is used to map a pixel value to a specific color. So for example, you might have, let's say, uh, 100,000 pixel points in a picture. Now, they have to be reprinted by only maybe 200 color combinations, because that's all you need. Now what you need to do therefore, is every pixel value, whatever combination of red, green and blue may exist for that pixel, has to be mapped onto one of these colors. These 200 colors which are chosen to represent the image are called a color palette. 
So a color palette is used to map a pixel value to a specific color. Multiple pixel values may map to the same color. That may happen once in a while. Now, since you have millions of points and each point is represented by three bytes, you have a huge plethora of information and you need some kind of compression. Compression can be of two forms, lossy compression and lossless compression. A lossy compression is where some information about image is lost. A lossless compression is no information is lost. Still, picture can be substantially compressed. Just to see the importance of compression, if you have any modern 12 megapixel camera and assume that it takes a photograph corresponding to 12 million pixels in that photograph, since each pixel can be reprinted by three bytes, a single picture will occupy 36 megabytes. You will notice that no camera will actually have a 36 megabyte pixel uh, picture normally. What happens is it is converted into a particular compressed format called JPEG, which is actually a slightly lossy format, but is more than adequate for human eye. So that is why you get JPEG pictures, which are much smaller in size. So, when you want to store information about image in a file, what is the information that you require? You require to know the width and height of the image. You require the type of colors present and values for each pixel in terms of these colors, not necessarily in terms of original colors. Several file formats have come about in the last few years. These are the various names, RAW, PNG, BMP, TIFF. GIF, JPEG, XMP. JPEG, for example, is a lossy format where you might lose some information. In case you have grayscale images and in case the images are small, which is what fingerprints would normally be, then since each pixel is represented by just one byte, a value between 0 to 255 of various gray shades, that is more than adequate to correctly represent the entire picture. No compression is required there. Without overwhelming size of a file, you can actually store that image as is. And therefore, any format such as BMP or PNG would be useful. However, these are all internal formats. You can't read that file. The file which contains an image, if you have to see a picture, you require some application program which will read that file and convert it into a visible image. That is called raster graphics. And there are many tools. For example, Microsoft Paint or even a fax or photograph viewer. These are tools which can read a JPEG file or a BMP file or a PNG file and display it so that you can see. But ordinarily, if you were to look inside the files to understand what those bytes contain, that will be all gibberish because they will mostly be stored in an internal format. In the early days of raster graphics, there was a time, by the way, where there were no graphic terminals connected to computers. There were no graphic terminals, period. So people had only computers and large ASCII printers. But when graphic terminals started evolving, different people at different research labs started developing their own file formats, which were all internal file formats. A particular group in France, they decided that they needed an ASCII file format to reprint an image. An ASCII file format, which can be edited easily, small files can be created quickly, representing some pictures. What kind of pictures would you like to edit and create? After all, you have to define each pixel point by point, etc. So obviously, you can't do that for very large images. But there is a need to prepare icons. You know icon, a small symbol representing something. These icons generally do not have a plethora of colors. It is not a colorful scene or something like that, not a photograph. These are simple icons. And people said, creating icons by painting digitally or scanning. Those days, scanners and painters were not available as easily as they are available today. So this particular team, Daniel Dada at, and, and Kolas Nahabu, this is Bell, uh, uh, the, the group Bull Computer Manufacturers. Bull was a major computer manufacturer of Europe. Now you don't hear of them, but they had a good research lab and in there, they develop an ASCII representation for an image file. How does that ASCII representation look like? The ASCII representation has, this as the first row. It is slash star XPN slash star. 
then static cap star pix map name the square brackets indicate an array by the way equal to then open brackets and string 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 which we shall discuss close brackets semicolon please note that this looks exactly like a c program component it was indeed intended to be a c program segment which was to be included in a c source code and that source code was to be directly compiled to generate a uh, 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 to to take that image and then display it using some other mechanism here is a format detail please note that this string has three types of string one is value string there is only one one string of this type then there are color strings which define the color coding for every different colors that is used there could be 100 colors 200 colors five colors two colors as many as you want and then finally there are pixel strings for each row of the image there will be one string and in that string will be color codes that are used to define the color key we shall explain this in a moment value string is just a single string which contains a numerical value for width a numerical value for height a numerical value for n colors and numerical value for characters per pixel then there is an array of key and color values each element typically will be like this a key which could be a single character two characters three characters this is the heart of the coding by the way this key is actually a printable or visible character which can be edited a b d c whatever what it could be one character two characters depends upon how many characters you have defined per pixel and for each character pair or triplet or single character you will have a code c followed by hexadecimal value of the color hexadecimal value is always given in red green and blue order r g b so two hexadecimal digits for r two for g uh, uh, and two for b key is the color code characters and then each picture can have its own color code the tool which actually analyzes an xpm file can map every color code using this key map into the appropriate colors and then this is followed by picture strings like each row in an image has one line in the file a line may have x dot x dot a a a a b q b w b q assuming that there are two characters used to represent a particular pixel a, a particular color now the fingerprint images that we use are in gray scale as i mentioned each one has a one byte pixel value so a gray shade can be represented by a color value which has identical red green and blue pixel as i mentioned for example hexadecimal 000000 is black hexadecimal ff 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 which is nothing but 255 255 255 maximum value a byte can contain or this will represent y 808080 for example in some intermediate gray shade like all gray shades can be represented exactly so you need exactly 256 color values to map every pixel unfortunately 256 keys in single printable character are not possible the ascii code has only 127 characters out of which printable characters are hardly 100 which can be easily recognized so what people do is they use two character code to represent every particular color here is a sample dot image so here you can see there is a first string here which says slash star xpm star slash notice that this is a c comment so it will be read in as a c comment the next one says static car star dot equal to so dot is the name of the file dot is the name of the image so it is a character pointer character pointer as i had mentioned earlier every character array actually represents a character pointer so dot represents an image which could be any number of bytes long depending upon width and height in this particular case the value string is 5521 what it means is that the width is 5 height is 5 there are two colors only and there is one character per pixel used which are the two colors one color is represented by dot another color is represented by x these are the two colors so that that these two lines actually represent the color code array after that there are lines of pixels how many lines 
because the width is 5 and height is 5, there will be 5 lines, each containing 5 bytes. So this is the first line, blank, blank, x, blank, blank. Blank, x, 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 blank. Blank, uh, no, no blank here, x, 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 x. Blank, x, 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 blank. And blank, blank, x, blank, blank. That means there is no dot that is used. There is an x that is used. But the blank also should be represented in a color. So this, instead of this dot, you can use the blank character. Blank character is not usable. So what actually this file should contain is dot dot x dot 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 x x x dot x x x x x x dot x x x dot 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 x dot dot because dot represents one color which is black and x represents not white. What is this color? Can you guess? F F zero 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 red. Because the first byte represents red, red is maximum intensity, blue and green are zero, zero. So it's a full red. So you'll actually get a red dot on, on, your, on your machine if you look at this. Here is a sample image. This sample image I have created, which is 256 by 256 just for convenience. This entire portion is black and this portion is white. So you can see that this is actually a grayscale image and the grayness changes from column to column. The first column is all black, the last column is all white and in between there are growing shares. Obviously there are 256 possible shares. So this sample image represents all possible shares that can be there. Our job is to create an XPM file which represents this image. Later on we can see that that XPM file when is given to a tool which can understand XPM can actually produce the same image on a computer screen. So here is the program to create XPM files. The first set of things are very standard and straightforward. I include IO stream, F stream, string, C string, math and namespace STD. You will notice that I am using C string also because string permits me to define string variables which we can say this string equal to that plus this etc etc in a C++ style because strings are objects. However, there are occasions where you need to use the C type strings which are actually character arrays. So a string is stored in a character array terminated by a null value that is backslash zero value. You need both in most cases and we have so far been using character arrays for manipulation but strings for simple concatenation and things like that. I have continued using both. Actually strings are objects which we have not yet discussed formally whereas character arrays are part and parcel of the C, C++ standard report type. Here is my main program which starts. Now you will notice some interesting thing here. I have said unsigned car star image. Image is going to be very large. How big it is going to be? Since I plan 256 pixels by 256, obviously the image size is 256 by 256. Height into width, number of pixels. Even if each pixel is reprinted by one byte, I will require 256 by 256 bytes. The point is, here I am declaring only a pointer to image, a character pointer. How large it is, I will determine dynamically. And I will allocate an array also dynamically. This is a feature we have never seen earlier. This is called dynamic memory allocation. We shall see that feature now. Then I have defined unsigned in n width, n height, n val. By the way, it is not uncommon to use in large variable names certain capital letters so that the variable is immediately readable and understandable. N width and N height written like this where actually the variables used in the equipment's APIs which I just mentioned because ultimately I had to connect this particular program version to interface it to that device. CAR symbols 2562. What are these? Remember I mentioned that there will be a character coding I will in, uh, uh, use for representing different colors or different shades of gear. Since there are 256 shades, 
I require 256 keys or 256 character combinations, which represent one, one combination represents one color. Since each combination I propose to use two characters, I have to declare an array of elements 0, 1, and 2, because each character array will contain two characters and a slash null character, which is terminator of that particular symbol. So I have these symbols, which I have defined as 256 symbols. Each is a three-character array. Base 1, base 2, CH1, CH2 are characters, which we shall use later in the program. Similarly, IJ, K, POS, and SIMPOS, etc., we shall see in a moment. Now, I want to create an XPM file, so I have to define what is a color palette. I can arbitrarily choose any characters, by the way, but searching for those characters from an XPM image would become very difficult because I have to ultimately map. When I read an XML file, XPM file, I have to map each pixel of the image into a value. Here I am mapping a value into a key. So both kind of transformation should be easy and numerically computable. That is why what I have chosen is a scheme which uses codes like AA, AB, AC, etc. up to AY, then BA, BB, BC, etc. up to BY, CA, CC, CB, etc. etc. up to CY and so on. Notice that A to Y, there are 25 characters. So if I take 25, 25, 25 characters repeating again, the first character changes after every 25 symbols. So I don't require capital A to capital Z. Capital A, capital B, capital C, capital D, E, F, G, H, probably I. That will be more than sufficient to 100 to 56 uh, colors. Individually, the second character will change. And that is how I get adequate number of keys to represent my colors. This is how I calculate various keys. There is an interesting squiggle because characters can be treated as integer numbers. Notice that I am choosing base 1 which was declared as a character variable to have a value capital A, base 2 as a value small a. Notice that the ASCII codes for these characters are in sequence. That means if capital A is base 1, then capital A plus 1 will be base 2, uh, uh, will be character B. Capital A plus 2 will be character C and so on. So I can generate all capital letters by adding 1 to that base 1. Similarly, by adding 1, 2, 3, 4 to base 2, I can generate all small letters in the C. Since I need to generate 256 key values, I set up a loop for 0 to 255 and I set K0, which is the first character of the symbol, as base 1 plus K by 25. What will this do? For values of K between 0 to 24, this K by 25 will be 0. That means only base 1, character A, will be occupying a symbol 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, etc. The first character will be A for 25 symbols. The moment K becomes 26, for example, this will become 1. 26 by 25 is 1, integer degree. And I will add 1 to base 1, which will make this whole value as character B. And then B will go into that particular first element of the symbol array for 26 to uh, 50, 51. Again, uh, 52 onwards, sorry, uh, 26 to 50. Again, 51 onwards, different things, uh, C will happen, D will happen and so on. Notice that for base 2, I am using K percent 25. This is modulo 25. So any value which is more than 25, if it is 25, the modulo will be 0. And again, it will go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, up to 24. Then again, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, up to 24. That is how the second character of a symbol will vary from small a to small b, small c, small d, etc. etc. In a simple arithmetic operation, I am able to create keys of this kind. I have not assigned colors to keys, but I have generated unique pairs of characters which can be used to represent colors. I, of course, put a slash null to say that each one of the elements of the symbols two-dimensional array is actually a character string. I print these symbols just to make sure that I get whatever I want. Please note I am printing symbol zero. Symbols are actually two-dimensional array. Now, when I say symbol zero, it treats this as a character pointer. And it prints the entire contents of that whole array. That is why 
I cannot ordinarily use C out if I wanted to print only a single character. If I wanted to print a single character, I have to take special precaution to print a single character. Anyway, now I start, I need an image which I want to encode in XPM file. I don't have an image. Ordinarily, I will get a fingerprint from that device. Here, I am creating an image on my own. I want to create that sample image. So, just go back to this point. This is width. And this is height. Now, if I vary i, so let us say this is ith row and this is jth column. This particular pixel is i comma j. What will be the value, grayscale value at this point? Notice that I wanted to fill up this entire set with zeros here, sorry, uh, black here, so 255 here maybe, oh no sorry, zero is, zero is black. So I wanted zero, 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 zero like that, I wanted one, one, one like that, and I wanted 256, 255, 255, 255 like that. You agree that this is what will give me the sample image? So what should be the value for the i comma jth element if I have a single dimensional array called image? So the image, image contains will be 256 into 256. So Technically, I want to set i comma jth element, but there are, this is not a two-dimensional array. How do I convert the value of i and j into a single-dimensional value? If within this array, I have to calculate a position in terms of i and j, my contention is that position will be given by i multiplied by W plus J. Do you agree with this? This entire thing is one width, second width, third width. So when I completed three widths, okay, I would have got three times width pixels gone. Since it starts with 0, 1, 2, if I multiply I into W, I am actually at the ith row beginning. And I add j to it so that I get this pixel value. This is how I am assigning pixel values here. So if you go back to the screen, all that I am saying is j varies from 0 to n width. Width is 256 here. So I am actually putting up a value j percent 256 will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 up to 255 as j varies. And that is what I want to push along the particular row. Zero value here, maximum value at the other column. And I want to do it for every row. All that I do is for 0 to n height, I will put this value, but where should I put it? So I put it in a position called pos, which I calculate as i into n width plus j. This is exactly will generate a picture value of the pixel value which is of the kind that we saw in the sample image. This is just an artificial ploy. In real life, I will neither know the width nor know the height nor I will be able to put any value that I want in an image. Actually, I will get this image captured from some device and I expect that device to tell me what is the width of the image, what is the length of the image. Since it is a grayscale image, I assume that the values which are supplied by that device for that entire array, I will get a filled up array from that device. Those values will be between 0 to 255. Since this is an artificial image I am generating, I have put these values like this here. Now I want to write the file in the XPM format. Notice the file open statement. This is the standard one which we have seen there. Sample 1, sample i, sorry, this is a capital I. 
sample i dot xpm that's the file name i have chosen ios colon colon out this is actually an additional information which is given for io stream objects so my file actually is a c++ object of the type io stream and the characteristic of this particular object is that it's an output file that is what is meant from this description the rest of it is standard we have been doing that if my file is open then i start writing if it is not then i will say file can't be open shut off the business so the rest of the entire program is written as part of this if and what does this if say it says that first of all write this comment line remember this is to be the first comment line in that xpm file then it writes the next line which is static char star sample i this equal to opening brass this was the second line of the xpm file notice that i am able to write this because the everything is standard ascii character set so i write the second line now i write a comment the comment says width height n colors and cast per pixel these are not values this is just a plain comment as indicated by slash star star slash i am just inserting a comment i can insert any number of comments in xpm file will ultimately going to be a c source file so all all comments will be ignored by the c compiler later never forget to put a end of line at end of each line now i write the image header information the image header information has to contain width height number of colors and number of bytes per color number of colors i have already pre decided to 56 number of bytes per color i have pre decided to bytes but height and width i have written as variable why because i want to use the same program later even if i get any new image which will have its own width its own height now that will be known by this time however in terms of the variable values of n width and n height so i am keeping them there notice that every line in the subsequent lines of xpm file has to start with an opening quote line closing quotation and double quote and comma that is the format of each line how do i insert a double quote at the beginning that is why you notice because double quote is required to start a string anyway which i want to output but since the first character i want to output is a double quote itself i put a backslash before that which is a escape character backslash double quote means mr c compiler please don't treat this double quote as the normal double quote quote of c++ but treat this as a character which is to be inserted in that string you will see that again and again again towards the end of this line i have backslash double quote yeah so i want to i want to insert this insertion operator will give me n width i have two blanks here then n height the value will go on to the my file then again i have new insertion operation two blanks again a value two blanks again a value and a string which contains a closing double quote and a comma followed by end of line so this will create the next line now i want to write color palette so i write a header again another comment slash star colors star slash now i am inserting color palette so you can see how the color palette is being inserted notice that i have to write 256 lines in that xpm file each line should contain the key value the two two character code followed by a letter c which means that it is a color not g or not m and then the color value in hexadecimal so see what i do i first put a backslash double quote as required then i put character casted symbols i0 please note symbols i0 is a pointer and it would have printed a large string but when i say cat in front of it the whole value is converted into a single character and a single character therefore is output this casting is very useful you have any expression it generates a value of a certain type if you want to force a conversion of that type into any compatible type for example you can convert int into a float you can convert character into integer you can convert integer into character you can convert a pointer into a character etc then you write the desired final type of the expression value in brackets in parentheses just in front of that expression this is called type casting 
and is an extremely important characteristic of C C++ program. So I typecast this character as a single character here and output it. Notice that for the I F symbol, I would have succeeded in printing the first character and the second character of the key value so far on my file. Notice that my file does not automatically put either blanks or new line unless I explicitly do that. So that is why I have two blanks followed by C followed by two blanks. So I have constructed half the line of a character code. Just the two character key, blank blank, C blank blank. Now I have to put a hex value for the corresponding color. I know what is the corresponding color because if I is the line number, then red, blue and green should have I, I, I. That will be the value of the gray scale. Red I, blue I and green I. So if I is 4, it will be 4, 4, 4. If I is 255, it will be 255, 255, 255. All that I need to do is write six hexadecimal characters representing the same value of I three times. However, I have a problem. Normally, if I say my file I, then the value will come out in decimal. I don't want it. I want it in hexadecimal. That is where you see another use of setting what is known as format flags. My file dot set f will set certain format flags that we choose. Each file in C++ objects, in object stream, comes with its own format flags. There are default values which you don't normally need to know because C in and C out normally function as formatted file objects only. So they have associated format flags. Normally we don't bother with it, but we know that whenever we output a value of a variable, it will come in decimal. There is a format flag which is called base field format flag. If the base field ordinarily is decimal, I want to convert it into hex. From this point onwards, any numerical value that I print will come out in hex unless I reset it, for which I use another operation here, my file dot unset f ios colon colon hex. This means that for the ios stream, whichever flags were set by me, unset them, break them into default value. Ordinarily, I would have simply said my file less less hash less less i less less i less less i. Hash represents hexadecimal. You notice that in the sample file that we saw. I want hash sign followed by two bytes of hexadecimal red, two bytes of hexadecimal green, two bytes of hexadecimal blue. And ordinarily, I will translate into two bytes, except for values of i which are less than 16. The values of i less than 16 require only one hexadecimal digit. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. That's it. But I need two, two characters. The second character should be 0, so it should be 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, F for the first 16 value. I can't force a 0 by any formatting conveniently. So notice what I am doing. If I is less than 16, I am actually forcing a 0 before every value of I. So the first 16 lines will contain 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 2, etc. 0, F, 0, F, 0, F, 0, F. Then we'll start 101010, which will naturally follow. In this way, I complete the entire color code or color palette insertion and end that with a semicolon, comma, and end L. So all the rows are written like this. Now I have to output the lines containing the coded pixel values for each row in the image. So I now scan the image for i equal to 0 to n height, which is the height. Notice that when we had seen here, I want to write this row first, then this row, then third row and so on, till all the height rows are written. So one row at a time, and each row has to be represented by two character color code for each pixel. Since I have 256 pixels, or n width pixels, I will write n width pairs of characters. These are to be preceded by an opening double quote, has to be succeeded by a closing double quote and a comma. This is exactly what I do here. I first put an opening double quote. Then for each row, I compose the remaining line. Notice how the remaining line is composed. For j equal to 0 to n width, I first get a pixel value. The position is calculated as earlier, and the value of the pixel is simply the positional value of image 
But positional value of image, image is a character string. Notice that each character is equivalent of an unsigned integer. So I cast this value into an unsigned int and assign it to val. So I now get a numerical value between 0 to 255. Now I locate two character symbols for this pixel. So what is the position of the symbol? I can do it with arithmetic. I can also search that array of symbols, but instead of searching, I know exactly how I have put the characters there. So depending upon the value, I divide this value by 25 and multiply by 25. I'll get the index for the first character plus value mod 25. I'll get the index for the second character. So 25 times this index plus 25 times uh, plus, plus remainder will be actually the position. So I simply say symbols sin pos 0. This is my first character. Notice that this is a pointer. So I cast it in char and assign it to ch1. Then I cast it in char, assign it in ch2. And I say my file restless ch1 restless ch2. I could have also written this entire expression here. On a slide it is not convenient to write a long expression. So therefore I have cast these in cars and assigned them to car ch1 and ch2. It's, it's a small time uh, simplification. Now I push closing quotes and new line. And then I have completed my entire picture writing now. I will now write the last line in the file which is which has a closing brass and semicolon. Because the entire file has to be actually a part of a C program source somewhere. And I close the file. So this is the program which will write the file. These are portions of XPM file which I have written. So when I execute this program, this file is generated. And this file says XPM static char star sample i width height n colors cars per pixel Notice that these comment lines, all these lines are generated by writing some fixed uh, C out uh, or my file out statements. Then these are the actual values 256, 256, 256 is width, 256 is height. There are 256 colors and each color is reprinted by two characters. Then I have a comment line for colors. This is how the color code key will come. This is my color palette. AA represents 0, AB represents 1, AC represents 2 and so on. This will continue till all color palette is exhausted. Then for each row, there will be one line. And finally, the last line will have A, etc., etc., etc. And it will end into KF. You will notice that KF will correspond to the maximum value 255 and AA will correspond to 0. And finally, I have this. This file will be actually created. It's an artificial sample. But if I have an actual image, instead of the artificially created image, this same program would have created an XPM file for that image as well, as we shall see in a moment as some sample output. When I give this XPM file to any imaging tool, okay, it will actually display that image. I can also convert it into BMP file to be used along with more popular Microsoft tools. Microsoft tools do not ordinarily recognize .xpm file. So you can use a convert utility to convert it into any form, JPEG or whatever. Using such conversion, I get this sample image again. Now this time, I have not constructed it by hand or something. This is what I, it, the program actually represents. Now, I have used the same program, incorporating it inside the interface to that device which we saw the other day. Except now, I cannot every time create the same file called sample I. After all, different individuals' fingerprints will be collected. Each individual may be fingerprinted for three or four fingers. So I have to have variable finger, uh, file names. To create these variable file names, I have this simple mechanism. I define a string called file name, and I define a string called file name with extension. I can get a file name for fingerprint storage by saying give a file name without extension and see in file name. Whatever I type, a single name, without extension will go in and will sit inside here as the file name. The final file name with which I want to open a file, output file, will contain an extension. In C++ objects, which strings are, I can simply say file name with extension equal to file names plus .xpm. So this will create file name .xpm as the name. However, when I open the file by saying my file .open, I cannot give just that file name with extension. Because if I did that, then that is treated as a string object and is not considered valid for
for an open statement in C file system. You have to give actually a C style string for that file name. But I have a function here which says dot C underscore str. It's actually a method for the object called string. All that it does is it takes the C++ style string and converts it into a C style string which is required for my open. This will open that file. iOS is again stated as out. So if I insert this code into the same program, the program will work and will work for any file. And now instead of artificial file, if I put this program along with the application programmer interfaces of that device, integrate it and connect that device to my machine and run this program, every captured fingerprint will come out as an XPM file. Here is a fingerprint XPM file that I have created. I have chosen names in a very funny fashion. LT means left thumb. Zero means zero at impression. Where the same fellow can later on come again with the thumb, I will call it LT1, LT2 for comparison purposes. There is some person two. I have person one, person two, person three. Practically everybody in the house and all guests who are visiting me yesterday have been fingerprinted. And I have files. Notice that width height is given by the device. 352 bytes width. 544 bytes height. That is the height and width that is written by that device. I have not created this artificial. The color code is of course my own. And this is followed by the actual pixels. So when I put that and create a .xpm file, convert it into .bmp for example, this is the fingerprint of a person I get. You will be getting such fingerprints when you do your registration part of the project and you will be using such fingerprints for analysis duplicate checking, application, whatever, whatever. Just to show you, here is a fingerprint of another person. Even visually you can see that these two fingerprints are different. But you have to handle that computer programming wise. And that is not an easy job. That is why you have to define certain templates, calculate those templates, and then there is a plethora of matching process which you will have to discover and apply. Here is the same person at different times. This is to illustrate that you can't take an image to image direct comparison byte by byte. It will never match. Why? Because there is a small displacement of the hand and finger when you capture the fingerprint, laterally or horizontally. And if that displacement happens, there will be subtle differences. For example, you will notice that this wall is here, whereas this is somewhere here. This Rich bifurcation is happening here, whereas it is happening somewhere here, nearer. So point by point comparison is completely useless in image comparison. That is why you have to translate these images by some pre-processing into some templates and, and, and do your work. Um, okay, we'll close this now. Thank you.